We're talking about tens of thousands of years of our cultural heritage here, so, you know, this is a sort of evidence to say that our people have been here. Once the new dam's built, all of that area will be underwater, so the fact that we're documenting it now means that we'll have that information forever. And we can continue telling and re-looking at things and telling the story about what was happening there before the European people came or before the dam was built. It doesn't matter how many artefacts you find in that, every artefact has its own story. We've um, done an archaeological survey of the whole area that's going to be impacted by the uh, dam construction, the enlarged Cotter Dam. We've now identified a number of sites where we think it's worth digging to go down in specific layers and then we've taken samples of that material and we're sitting that to see what sort of material, how many artefacts are coming out subsurface. Uh, because we know that often when we do an archaeological survey, we miss a lot of the stuff because it's below the ground and we can't see it. And so there we're doing a by hand methodology where we're digging with shovels and trowels. And again, we're taking out material and we're wet sitting everything to see what sort of artifacts come out. Oh, we could have an artifact. I'm not quite sure. They'll have to go through the sieves. So this is a spur line, a low spur line running down to what was formerly the, the Cotter River and um, it's a very likely spot for Aboriginal um, sites to, to be found. So we put a, um, a baseline right down the centre of the spur and we're running these perpendicular lines off the baseline and we put in pits um, at 20 metre intervals along this transect here and so far we've dug um, one pit up there um, to a depth of 20 centimetres. We at this stage don't know what is being found in these pits because that's being um, all the soil is being processed by uh, people down there at the sieve station. They're wet sieving, um, removing artefacts from the sieves and bagging them, and then they'll go away for analysis. The sort of stuff that we've been finding in these upper upper ridgeline context, they're not massively huge sites. Uh, we're not finding thousands of artefacts, for example, so they're quite sparse. But they are still telling us very interesting, an interesting story because the Aboriginal people who are camping here might have been doing different things. These were probably interim campsites up here, and the main campsites where most of the family was and all of the activity and family activity was probably further down where the river is now, or where the, the dam is now. So we're not expecting huge numbers of artefacts in these sites up on the ridge, but we're still very interested in the sort of stuff that we might find. So this area out here was mainly to do with um, the men. Yeah, there were women and children out here too, but because we're sort of at the foothills of the Brindabellas, and that's where all the men did all their initiations up there. So this area here, to me, would have been like an area where um, you waited until you were called, maybe. So it is a very special area, yeah. The archaeologists can do some archaeological assessment of the material that's found but the representative Aboriginal organisation, REPS, uh, they're here and they can tell us about the cultural values of the sites here. So their role is to look at these sites and the sort of material that they're finding and to provide a cultural values assessment. So both those values, the archaeological or scientific values and the cultural values, are then all brought together in a single report. And we report that to uh, the Heritage Council. And the stories will come together, yeah, because you get the ideas of where your people were along the rivers and that around here, you know, and where they sat, where they camped. It does, it puts the, um, the, 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 the thoughts of history, you know, about where they, where they live and that, yeah, it's good. Well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an animal person, I'm an animal woman, so to me it's really personal. 
Um, you can understand the way our people lived in traditional times. They lived off natural resources. So every time you finish spit, just it really empowers me because you know my people were here, and I feel as though my ancestors they'd be glad to see me here, looking after their things. But you know, I, I feel I feel very privileged to be chosen to be here. Yeah, I do. I guess our job is to basically document what is there now and so that in the future people can go back and say okay before the dam was inundated or built again we know that there was this many possibly this many people living out there and they were doing camping and making tools and things like that so our our job is basically to document and record the cultural heritage of the the Cotter Dam area. In terms of sort of the artifacts are coming out we got lots and lots and lots so that's really good we're going to be able to tell a really good story and some things are really in good condition because all of that area has been used for forestry in the past so it's all been heavily disturbed but they're still there so that means we can say we can still glean that information that people were camping here they were doing this here and we've found some broken axe heads and things like that which are the more significant and, and larger artifacts that aren't found sort of very frequently in, in most sites and also a lot of the smaller things will be able to tell us what sort of fishing or hunting they were doing and what sort of artefacts they were making so what the activity sort of leads to and the whole assemblage will tell us a really good story because it's not been heavily developed other than the forestry it's still out there to find and to tell the story that's I guess the not surprising but the good the really good thing about the Cotter area Um, so at the moment we're at um, Navin Officer's uh, lab in Fishwick and we've just been looking at all of the artefacts that we collected for the Cotter Dam project. So the stone tools and um, axe heads and hammer stones and all of those things that we collected right back to the beginning of the project. So right back when we were doing uh, monitoring for the geotech works that happened when they were first designing the dam right up into all of the salvage works where we collected where the, the construction area was and also the inundation area for the dam. All of those artefacts we laid out on the table for everyone to see and I think there were about, oh I didn't even count the boxes, there were so many, but a lot of artefacts, well over 3,000 I think. So we had all of the registered Aboriginal organisations come along today, as well as representatives from the ACT Heritage Unit, ACTU, BWA and myself from Navin Officer, just to talk about what is going to happen to the artefacts now, because obviously we've collected a, a whole heap of, of material and we now want to decide what's to happen with that material. We don't really want it to stay in our lab, but there's nothing, no purpose for it to stay in our lab. So we're really trying to get from the Aboriginal organisations what their feelings are. And, and from, from our discussions today, it's obvious that they want things, some things to be kept for display purposes and for educational purposes. And also most of the material to go back out to site at the Cotter to be returned to country, to be back in contact with the land. Come from them, that. Just yeah. put them away from them and we can agree on like an area. For them to go. So if you like out there, as nature would like it to be. Do we want them buried a little bit so no one can find them, but we can find them? Where they were originally found. No, yeah. I agree with that. Right there. So yeah. we do. We want to create yeah. a yeah. whole yeah. series yeah. of sites. Yeah. 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 Rather than creating one yeah. site. Yeah. yeah, that's how exactly we do as well. Okay. You got to look at the spiritual side of things. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's what I would look at. So yeah. there's some artifacts I would like to return to country, whether they're underwater or not. 
but there's some artefacts we'd like to use for educational, not all, yeah, but okay. for educational cultural awareness. So there's two things going on there, isn't it? It's, it's <coughs> which artefacts we would, of these we, we keep, uh, and then where the, for for that for that purpose of education, ongoing education, um, and who's going to hang on to those and where they're going to be stored, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then there's the other side of it is the, the artefacts that we don't keep. Yes, we turn the country. Yeah. very important that you know you guys feel that this is a very culturally sensitive process and that everything's done according to your laws and so you know from ACTU's perspective it's very important that that happens and you know I just need your advice on how to make that happen. Yeah, this place up here feels a lot better than that um, and also we want to have a spot for the artefacts to go so future generations can come to uh, happy place in that to um, have a look at uh, what we found out here over the last couple of years. Hey look, you want to be down there, have you got? Oh, this is lovely. Yeah, yeah good choice, James. This is lovely. Oh, really? Even from a scientific point of view on that, like, places like this are, are better for the artefacts to go back instead of, like, um, hidden away down in, you know, a gully or something. Yeah. Um, we just got to do the right things by the, the spirits. Go through the bag, have a look at the different material of artefact. Um, one bag might have blades, the other one might have other cutting utensils and that, and others could be um, hammer stones or axe heads and that. And naturally, the better ones we um, keep for the educational purposes, and the other ones we just um, uh, return to country because it's a spiritual thing too for us. I'll teach my kids now about um, Ngunnawal culture and also teach them about um, re respecting the land and looking after the land because uh, since day one we've always um, uh, looked after the land, loved it, nur nurtured it because to me um, it's all about Mother Earth. You respect Mother Earth, Mother Earth will respect you. Yeah, retouch. Your thumb, thumb fits yeah, beautifully in that little, yeah. little, there's a little, yeah. little like imitation there. You would like there. the bigger that's ones right. to do that's a little right. piece on the, something smaller. Yeah, 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 I'm with you. Yeah. That's a beauty. Yeah. yeah. It's nice fitting. Burabuja. So I bring my kids back and um, also like the extended family to visit the site and that um, because it's a spiritual thing as well. It's not just um, putting rocks back into a hole and that's it. Um, we've got to continue that connection we've had for 60,000 years plus. Mm -hmm.